lot of students were attracted by bioengineering or excited to get into it. It was just an organic thing that, that evolved. There were problems that needed a solution, particularly clinical problems. It became fairly clear the expertise needed to, to solve those, and, the, and that expertise existed across boundaries. One thing that was really a remarkable asset of the bioengineering program was that it was really from the, the, the ground up. The core of that program was really managed by the faculty across the university who were interested in bioengineering. It was one of my ambitions to be able to record from multiple neurons simultaneously. I had a chance to work with these phenomenal students and faculty that really advanced the understanding, the prevention, and the treatment of musculoskeletal disorders, injuries. There were excellent people in medical imaging, from MRI to CAT scans to acoustic imaging. Our medical ultrasound was pretty strong over in the uh, radiology department under Paul Carson. There were groups in Kresge Hearing, there were groups in the, the new uh, area, semiconductors and microsensors. And there was a burgeoning sort of, I'll call it biotechnology area, where a lot of more systems biology, uh, but this really predated the sort of regenerative medicine area. It was really a vibrant program one that was continually sort of run on a shoestring, one that was continually providing education to some degree by the sort of donation of departments to allow their faculty to teach core courses. And so it was a really important growth and yet a really important interim time for, for the program to think about what should it become. It became uh, very clear early on that becoming a new department was probably the only way to go. And I was lucky enough to find a, a group of people who would help me write some grants to the Whitaker Foundation, who at the time were supporting these kinds of initiatives. Here was a bioengineering program that was large, energetic, highly published, lots of faculty with lots of grants. And the reality is it was sitting within a highly recognized medical school and a highly recognized engineering school, and, and dominantly on the same campus. Um, how many other places actually had that? Become a department at the time was quite an involved process because the faculty had to vote. I made it my uh, mission to go to every department and talk at least once at their faculty meetings to sort of make the case. It finally did come to a vote and we were surprised that there was not one dissenting vote in, uh, in the whole college. We've just created a department in the School of Engineering, yet the program had probably somewhere in the range of 90 or 95 faculty from a variety of departments, the largest number from the medical school. How do these other faculty stay involved and part of this biomedical engineering? Because remember, that's what gave it its vibrancy. We created the department, and we also initially created a center for biomedical engineering research to sort of um, make sure that everybody who always was a really important part of this program to actually still be part of it. One of the first phone calls I got when I became department chair uh, was from Jim Williscroft, who was at the time the interim dean of, of medicine. And basically that phone call was, was pretty much about this idea of a joint department. Maybe embarrassing to say that it took about six years of discussions to get there, but we did eventually get there. So where's it gonna go now? Well, I think number one, uh, the, the faculty that are part of the department, the faculty that are associated with the department are phenomenal. And there's opportunity that there will be more faculty recruitment. So if you think about the areas of the new faculty you're going to bring to it, the breadth that it's going to have, uh, it's, it's really quite remarkable. Most of us who are in biomedical engineering are, are in biomedical engineering for a couple of reasons. One is that we love the science. I love the mathematics of medical imaging, for example. But we also love the fact that what we're doing can potentially impact the lives of people and improve health. Having a department where you can try to foresee the future and you can hire people in those areas has been extremely helpful. Biomedical engineering is, is this inherently broad discipline uh, and our goal here is really to have 
faculty be leaders within their disciplines. Day to day, it's a matter of who do you get a chance to work with, the quality of the students you get to work with, the trainees, the quality of the faculty, the sort of culture environment and ease of uh, and friendliness in the environment. I don't think there's a place that actually can match this.